price of Bitcoin drops below $6,000. There's panic on the streets. We go to the Tokens Blockchain Economic Forum in Singapore to get on the inside of the situation and find out what's really going on. Meet Miko Matsumura, the founder of Evercoin, and Tone Vase, the world's most accurate Bitcoin price predictor. Big dip. People think it's the end. You know, the bubble is bursting. That's it, we're done. No more Bitcoin. What do you think? Oh, right here. You gotta buy that dip. You gotta <laughs> buy the dip. Um, I'm a believer in Bitcoin. I, I just, I really think it's gonna be, gonna be the innovation of the future. Uh, Bitcoin has always reversed because some of the smartest computer scientists in the world are working on it, making it more secure, making it more usable, making it cheaper for tr to transact, and we'll get there. We're not gonna get there tomorrow, but we'll get there. When will the price stabilize? Well, I think there's probably a strong support level at 6,000. Obviously, that could be breached and we could go lower, but it feels like there's definitely like hodlers down there, right? And I think that's really going to produce that uplift that we need. I do not see Bitcoin going lower than $1,300. And I think that is actually the ideal point for it to fall to uh, before it goes all the way back up to 20,000 and more. Ooh. Sounds a little scary. There's like a, sometimes like a bus will pull over and then it'll stoop down, right? The bus will kind of lower down so you can get in easier, right? So right now the bus is lowering down, right? So in a way, like if you can get in easier now, like it's a lot easier to get in now. We started with the Great Depression in 1929. Uh, everyone talks about how bad it was. No one talks about how the market doubled every year for like four years. You want things to go up reasonably. So I'm kind of happy for this dip. Uh, if we would have went to 100,000, the pain would have been much worse. What do you think would have happened if the market kept going up? You know, I mean, it was at 19,000 just Absolutely. Uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, so to me, like, what's funny is if you look at the growth as an asymptote, there's a possibility that the line almost becomes vertical, right? And it's damaging. It's extremely damaging because the thing that people want as builders, right? In Silicon Valley, we talk about runway. So runway is the amount of time that you have to build the software that you want to build before it's over, right? So if, if Bitcoin does a ver vertical line, right, Can't it's build. just going to, there's no time. There's no time, it, it just, it's, oh, it's, it's up and down in a heartbeat Expensive and it's over. Expensive to buy a brick. It's, it gets <laughs> crazy. It's too crazy, right? It makes no sense and it's just pure speculation and hot air and no chance to really build value because I think where the game has to go is we have to build the roads, we have to build the airports, we have to build the real base infrastructure for crypto. That takes some time. Human DNA and ideas utilize solar energy to transform the Earth into a civilization worth $600 trillion. Who defines the rules for transforming chaos into effective systems? Centralized power or free markets? And who enforces the rules? Bureaucracy or something else? It's a history-long battle of ideas. Homo sapiens drove 40 human species to extinction when their leaders invented spirits. This led to centralization of power and growth of tribe size and productivity. Competitors living in anarchy were defeated. Centralized states seemed like the only option until the birth of democracy in ancient Greece and Rome. After democracy was replaced by authoritarian regimes, empires stagnated and collapsed. Thanks to decentralized, self-regulating guilds, Venice became a world trade leader. Once power was monopolized, Venice went from an economic powerhouse to a museum. Decentralization of power in England empowered innovators and entrepreneurs and led to the Industrial Revolution. Production increased tremendously, bringing wealth and power to Great Britain throughout the 19th century. In the 20th century, the crash of an under-regulated stock market in the U.S. resulted in the Great Depression. Crisis and social unrest led to centralization of power across the globe. In some countries, it led to extreme violations of human rights. In others, it led to the growth of state intervention and spendings that seemed to be the only remedy. However, state monopolies caused deadly combination of unemployment, high inflation, and corruption. Thatcher and Reagan used Hayek's free market theories to gain support and remove the state from the market. Eventually, centralized planning systems lost to capitalism and free markets. But the bureaucracy still ruled the planet. 
until the invention of blockchain technology. Bitcoin has already become a substitute for failing financial systems and central banks in countries with hyperinflation, like Venezuela or Nigeria. Will blockchain replace bureaucracy in every aspect of our lives, from capital markets to governments, or will it fail in its attempt to change the world?